Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sheila OJ, and I am the communication specialist with Jobberman Nigeria. Welcome to a fantastic session with Glory Edozian. For this session, we're talking about networking, job hunting, and getting hired remotely. But before we begin, I want to tell you a little story. So, I actually resumed remotely with Job of Man Nigeria. And um, at the time when I resumed, which was a few months ago, <laughs> about eight months ago, it felt a bit foreign, you know, being onboarded, getting to work with your um, getting to work with your colleagues, most of the people that you don't know, you haven't met them before, and then you get to start, you know, interacting with them and getting work done. So it was a very interesting experience. And having that experience showed me the importance of being able to work remotely. Once upon a time, when you said you were working from home, it was like an excuse not to show up at the office. Now, working from home is as a reality, it's our new normal. So today we're going to be talking about how to maximize our online visibility, obviously how to maximize the Jobberman platform as well. Um, a lot of times people say things like, oh, I'm not able to get jobs on Jobberman, what's going on? And that's really because you're not maximizing your profile. And so we'll be talking about that today, how to maximize your profile and also how to um, in a way, I would say like a mini personal branding, <laughs> our online um, persona, our online presence, the importance of that in this day and age. Gloria Dozian, who's going to be with us shortly, is a coach, a visibility coach. I would like to say a guru in this um, field. Hello, Glory. Welcome. <laughs> um, Hi. Hi. Okay, so I was just I was just telling our audience and trying to introduce you as our speaker today. So Gloria Dozian is a LinkedIn disability coach and the lead consultant at Inspired by Glory Academy. Um, so she's going to be talking a little bit more about what she does and obviously the reason why we're here today. Um, before you joined Glory, I was just giving them a little story of how when I joined Jobberman a few months ago, I resumed remotely, right? It was right at the beginning of lockdown. My, my working tools were delivered to me at home. Um, and then I, has, I started working um, <laughs> with a lot of my colleagues that honestly, I feel like I'm still meeting some of my colleagues. Like I meet people and I'm like, oh yeah, that's who you are. And so it just shows that this new life and this new normal that we've now found ourselves in, um, being able to network and being able to job hunt and also resuming work remotely has now become an important thing for every one of us. So I'm really glad to have you here today <laughs> where you can get to share your wealth of knowledge with us and we can also... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? Okay, I think there's a. Actually, I'm happy laugh. to be here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, now I can hear you now. Yes, I'm. We're glad to have you. So, where you can share your wealth of knowledge with us. Okay, so um, I think that's about it for my end. From now, um, over to you, Glory. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Jobberman, for having me. I'm so excited to be here, um, especially since I'm here to discuss one of my favorite topics ever, and that is networking. Um, so I'm going to share my screen in a bit. So just give me a second. Let me work technology. I'm sharing my screen in a minute. Uh, let's see. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm hoping everybody can see my slides correctly. If you can see my slides, just help me type in the chat section that, yes, we can see your slides, Glory. Just let me know so that I make sure that everybody's with me as I'm going ahead. Yes, fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, so today I'm um, discussing networking, job hunting, and getting hired remotely. Now, let me allow me to introduce myself. Um, my name is Gloria Dozian. I'm a LinkedIn visibility coach. 
Um, and what I do is I help mid to senior level career executives build visibility and professional credibility, as well as establish themselves as thought leaders on and off LinkedIn. So what I do basically is I teach people how to be visible online, right? whether it's on the Jobberman platform, whatever it is, and whatever it is, in visibility not just for the sake of being famous, but for the sake of helping you to achieve whatever your career goals are. Okay, so what are we going to discuss today? So we're going to discuss quite a few things, and I know I have only about 25 minutes, so I'm going to make sure I stick to time. So today we're going to look at my networking story. So I always find it very, very helpful to share with people how networking has personally benefited me. And then we will now look at what is networking, because I think that a lot of times when we talk about networking, people are confused. What is this? Why is this important? They shall say, I should network, Sha. How do I do it? And then from there, we're going to networking mistakes. And then we will look at what your networking strategy should be in this virtual world, as well as some tips for building visibility online. So that's what we're going to look at today. So let me share my story, right? How did networking help my career? So I have three really quick stories I want to share with you guys. So the first story was I was I was at the time I was living abroad and I wanted I wanted to have a great job. I just thought, ah, how can somebody come here and just be slaving away in McDonald's or something like that? You know, I really wanted a great job. So what I did was I went, and then I was doing my PhD. So I asked my supervisor, I remember his name is Joe. And I went to him and I was like, Joe, look, I need a job. Like, I know I can only work 20 hours with my visa, but I need a part-time job that is within what I studied. I don't want to be working in a shop and doing all of that. And so he was like, okay. And I remember that time, what he did, he did something really interesting. He had, you know, like how you have all these notice boards. So he had this big notice board, um, in his office, right? And he looked at the notice board and he had like different cards there. And he picked three cards and he sent them an email. And he was like, um, the, the people on the cards and email, he was like, oh, hello, I have this really bright student from Nigeria. She's very, very good. Her research skills are good. She's excellent in academics. And she's looking for some practical paid experience. So out of those three companies, two called me for an interview and I got a job. So now this job was never advertised. Right? as well as my organization but in different teams we're doing started building relationships and then i found out when opportunities were available i applied for them and i got the job again there was no formal application process it was more like talking to the head of the department having a quick chat having like a quick coffee chat and saying oh i think you're right for this you know come in and and let's see how it goes right so here again no application process vital role of relationships and disabilities so i was being seen by the people in my industry Now let's fast forward. This is for further down my career, like 10 where I want to go. And so what I started doing was I started thinking, okay, who are the people that are doing the things I would like to do? Who are the actual consultants that are working in Nigeria and abroad? And I started finding out about the conferences they attended and all of that. And sometimes I would use my own money to go for those conferences. I would pay, go meet the people, speakers. I would introduce myself. I would send them emails because obviously they lived abroad. They didn't live in Nigeria. Some of them in Abuja and I lived in Lagos. I would stay in touch. And one day I got the email that changed my life. And it was basically one of these consultants. And he said, Glory, I think I have a great opportunity for you. And it was to contribute to a national level climate change policy document, which is what I wanted. And ever since that day, almost every year, I consult on at least one climate change document, and I get paid for that remotely. So even this year, some last
Okay. Um, we know how it is. A little bit of network. Um, we're waiting for Glory to reconnect. But before she reconnects, I just want to say that if you have any questions on her presentation or for the event, please feel free to leave your questions in the chat section. Or there's another section right there that says ask a question. So please leave your questions there and then we will answer those questions or we'll be a discussion and a QA right after. So while we wait for um, Glory to reconnect. Another thing we can do actually in our chat section is please introduce yourself. Um, I would like to say a thank you to Sir Gideon, who already introduced himself. So please feel free to introduce yourself in the in the chat section as well. Let's know where you are. Let's know um, your profession as well and the number of years of experience that you have. My colleagues, um, Timmy and Buki, are also in the chat section and they will be responding to whatever questions that you may have about Jobman and then using the Jobman platform. So Gloria Dozier will join back up with us shortly as she tells us her networking story. Um, okay, well, hello, Ubon. You're connecting from Uyo. That's nice. So what's, what's the weather like in Uyo today? That's a very, very interesting question because in Lagos, it's a bit sunny, but it rained this morning. So what's it like in Uyo as of now? Um, and again, we're talking about networking so please um talk about the industry mention your industry you just never know who in the who is also watching this event that would that is also in the same industry as you are in so someone called grace hi grace has asked a question which i have taken note of um it's a question that we will answer much later as soon as glory is back up right Or well, actually, I think I can, while we wait for her, I think I can actually answer that question. You're saying you need help or suggestions on how you can get a remote job outside the country while here in Nigeria. Now, the beauty of remote work nowadays is that you can literally be working anywhere in the world. Um, so you can now, just like Grace requires or Grace wants, you can now get a job, say, for a company in the UK or in the US, or, and you're working here in Nigeria. There, there's actually someone who got uh, quite a number of. There's actually someone who got quite a number of remote jobs, working from Nigeria for, and one of the companies happens to be in the UK, right? So what I would say is obviously look out for remote jobs. A lot of companies that are open to their employees working anywhere in the world actually include it in the description of the job, saying that they don't mind anyone or they don't mind people working remotely. If you check the jobberman.com on our platform, you see quite a number of remote job opportunities. So I would say, first of all, start from jobberman.com, obviously, because where else will you start from? Start from jobberman.com, look for remote jobs, and there's actually the, the list of remote jobs. Um, I believe either my colleague Timmy or Buki will share that and put it in the chat box of remote, the list of remote jobs. And then you can apply. You can as, as well apply for them. So that is, that is really one of the suggestions that I would offer. Okay. Hi, Sophia, um, who is in Enugu. And Sarah in Potako. It's good to know that we have quite a number of people. Um, from all parts of Nigeria. Grace, I hope I was able to answer your question. And if I haven't, um, please let us know. If not, again, you can drop a comment in the chat section and one of my colleagues will be in touch. Gideon, you're asking about if you can get the slides. I believe that's what you're asking, if you can get the slides. Yes, you will get this. I believe the slides will be made available after the event. I'm just, I just want to mention some of the industries that are present here today. So we have quality control and assurance. Okay, hi Chidima, right. There is an architect, 
from Ondo State. Hello, Abiodu. And Hi, Glory guys. is welcome back, Glory. I was here talking to myself. I didn't realize. <laughs> It's just, it's just I'm network. So I'm so <laughs> oh well, so Where so we stopped. That you okay, so we stopped as when you were talking about consulting and how you know you and you got your first job through networking, and then how you now um you know became a consultant. So that's where we stopped. Is that way. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. And I've gone far. Okay. All right. So let me let me share my Okay. All right. No problem. Okay. So this is where you guys stopped. Um, so I had finished the story here and I was saying that, okay, so why is networking so effective, right? Why is networking so effective? There is this, there is this um, quote by Robert Kiyosaki. He's the one that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he says, the richest people in the world look for and build networks, right? Where everybody else looks for a job. Now, it doesn't mean that... Um, it doesn't mean that obviously that if you shouldn't look for a job and you should just network and all of that, but it's really about talking about how, you know, building the right relationships can help you get the opportunities you need. So as opposed to just concentrating on looking for that opportunity, people can actually connect you to those opportunities. Okay, so but why is networking so effective? And so to do that, what I want to talk about now is the difference between a network and networking. So a network is a set of relationships that you depend on to get things done to get ahead in your career and to develop professionally, right? So these are, you know, who do you depend on to get things done in your career? Who do you ask for help and things like that? Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, you are the only one asking here. Other people in your network are asking you as well, right? So it's not a one-sided thing. It's very symbiotic. Now, a key thing here is people in your network are aware of you and what you do, right? They are committed to seeing you succeed and will more often than not spend their social capital to help you achieve your goals because they know, like, and, and trust you and are aware of the value you add, right? So again, it's not just about saying this person is in my network or I'm connected to this person or I sent this person an email. The, if for people to really be in your network, right, especially in these virtual times, they must have some level of awareness of who you are and what you do, right? And they must have be some level of commitment to seeing you succeed. Now, networking, on the other hand, is the art of staying connected to that network, adding new relationships, and demonstrating value in that network. Now, why do I say this? Because a lot of times when people say, oh, network, it's always about building re new relationships. But it's not always about that. Sometimes you are sitting on a gold mine and you don't even know it, right? So networking is three things. Staying connected to your network, adding new relationships, but also demonstrating value within your network. So you can be connected to people. You can be adding new people to your network online. However, if you're not demonstrating value, you are not networking, right? So you're not building a healthy network. So what I want us to do, I want us to pause for the next five minutes, and I want us to quickly test the strength of our network. And I'm going to show you how, right? So please, if you have a sheet of paper where you're taking notes. I just want you to do um, a few things for me. I want you to write down the names of 10 people. Oh no, 10 is probably too long in the time we have. The names of five people that you've spoken to in the last four months about your career, right? So about your career goals, whatever. Just write down the names of at least four to five people that you've spoken to in the last four months about your career. So really quickly, I'll count to 10 and then I'll move on to the next stage of the test. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now that you've gotten those names, right? And if you're, if you're not sure about the names, what you can do is just write down the steps so you can do it on your own later. Okay, so once you've written down those names, what I want you to do now, I want you to divide them into three categories, right? The first category is friends and family. So obviously that's self-explanatory, your friends, your colleagues, all of that. Second is operational connections. So operational connections are people that you depend on every day to get things done. So your colleagues, somebody that you are partnering with on a project, 
those kind of things. So those are your operational connections, your teammates and things like that. The next one is strategic connections. So strategic, strategic connections are people that help you envisage the future and give you the tools and resources to achieve that future. Now, I want you to look at that list. If you don't have at least four, well, okay, at least 50% of that list. So when you have time, please do it up to 10 so that you can really have up to 10 names. So you can really test this. If you don't have at least up to um, 50, 40% of your list of strategic connections, you have to do a lot of work. It means that a lot of people in your network cannot help you achieve your goals. They can't help you get a new job. They can't help you do all the things you want to do. The second thing I want you to check is really quickly, male and female. A lot of times, especially women, you have only women in your network, right? That's not good because <laughs> you need to have different people in your network, different genders, because the more diverse your network is, the more likely you will get to hear about different opportunities. Then the final thing I need you to test is how long have you known these people? So zero to two years, two to five years, and five and above. If you find, right, that everybody in your network is from five years and above or from two to five years, it means you're not adding new people to your network. If you find that all most of the people in your network are less than two years, it means that you are not using the network that you've, that you've built, people you knew from school, people from your old job, you're not utilizing that network. So it's very important that you test the strength of your network before you start thinking about building a new network or networking okay i hope that was helpful okay so what i want to do now let's go back to my slides if i can find them okay yes okay so why is networking so effective because it's effective because no man is an island right and you are leveraging other people's access to information and you are building trust and people get to know like and trust you and that makes you top of mind so the more you're networking the right way, the more you're adding people to your network, reconnecting to the people that are already part of your network and showing the value you bring to your network, right? The more you become top of mind. So with this in mind, what are some of the networking mistakes people are making? The first mistake, right, is wrong mindset. A lot of job seekers think or see themselves as beggars. Oh, I need a job. Please come and give me a job. No. When you get the job, are you going to work for free? You are not. <laughs> They're going to pay you for that job. So what you need to do is position yourself as somebody who has value, right? So when I'm when I was having that conversation with the consultants I met, I wasn't saying, oh, please, oh, you know, if you think of anything comes up, let me know. I was saying, no, you know, I've worked for the last 15 years. I worked in the UK. I worked in various industries in Nigeria. These are the kind of projects I've been leading on. And I think it's, you know, I now have the skills and the capacity to work at an international level because I've done X, Y, and Z. My mindset was very clear. I wasn't begging. So that's why when opportunities came, they were like, oh, I remember this girl that says she has done something like this. Let me call her. So the first thing is get this beggar mindset out of your i know that sometimes we are desperate we want a new job and everything but sit down and really think about your skills and your accomplishments the next thing is what is your focus a lot of times people are just applying everywhere and anywhere so your cv or your online profile is so generic it's so generic that when people are looking for key skills right they can't find your cv there your cv doesn't apply so you, what you need to do is think what do i want to do next in my career what are the skills i have that i need to project and make sure that you are projecting those skills and that you have a clear pitch so i just told you my pitch when i was talking to the consultants i was able to tell them where i had been working the key achievements the projects i had led on the opportunities i was looking for so it's now an intelligent conversation it's a rubbing of minds it's not i'm begging you for an opportunity right and then another thing people do is, oh, there's one event here, I'll quickly go. Oh, there's one event here, I'll quickly do, go. Being everywhere and nowhere, you need to get specific about your job search. And you need to think about, what am I trying to do next? Am I trying to go into FMCG? Am I trying to go into data analytics? Where are the people that deal with data analytics, the professionals in data analytics, where do they go, right, virtually? Because obviously we're talking about virtual times. I know that there are many professional associations, many WhatsApp groups, many things, be, you know, ways that you can connect with professionals um, outside of, you know, seeing them face to face. They are not utilizing social networking sites effectively. So, for example, Jobberman has an excellent um, job, job search platform. Have you set up your profile? Is your profile complete? Because on that platform, 
People that are looking for people like you are there, right? Recruiters are there and they are searching, right? But if your CV is not there, if your CV is not complete, if your profile is not complete, you haven't put in your key skills, and Sheila is going to come and explain this a bit more, they won't find you, right? And then you're not utilizing your, your existing connections. So who are the people that you already know in your sector that are doing great things? How are you connecting with them? How are you demonstrating your value to them? Right. So if there was time, because we had that network glitch, I would have asked you guys to write in the comment section. Maybe you can now confess your networking sins. Which of these things have you done? Which of these things have you committed? So what should you do instead? And I'm going to start rounding up now. What should you do instead? Let us now look at, you know, those three stories I told you. Let's put them now into virtual terms. Right. So the first thing is get clear on your goals. What are the things you want to achieve? right in your career what are the next kind of roles you're looking for now this is very important so for example let's say you're looking to work with um a top fmcg a top multinational in the fmcg sector right and you have like maybe the big four in your mind so like unilever or whatever those jobs are right you can go on their website and see what are the values in this company right so maybe one of their values is innovation leadership and all of that when you are filling out your summary on the job man profile make sure you showcase your leadership skills right but then if you don't if you're not clear on your goals what kind of company am i targeting what kind of role am i targeting you won't be clear on how do you what skills should you project so that you become attractive to recruiters who are looking for, to recruit for that particular role the next thing you need to do is develop your whole list Right. So for me, the way I define who list, who list is a list of people who can help you achieve your goals or who have achieved the same career milestones you are seeking. Now, the mistake a lot of people make is so you say, OK, I want to work in FMCG. Oh, I need to connect with Dangote. I need to connect with the CEO. I need to. Mm -mm. First of all, think who is doing the job in Dangote, Dangote Cement that I want to do. So maybe it's the um, business analyst associate, um, business analyst associate or team lead for marketing and communications. That's the person you need to connect with first. Who is the HR manager? Who is the recruitment and development manager? Those are the people you need to be connecting with, right? So develop your whole list. Where do these people go? So marketing and communication professionals, where are the marketing and communication and um, communication professional groups? Where do they meet? What are the associations? Make sure that you are going there, right? The people who have achieved the things that you achieve, wherever they go, go there, right? What virtual events and seminars and master classes, right? Go wherever your whole list. The people who have achieved the things you want to achieve, go where they go. If you don't remember anything I say today, please remember that one thing. Who Go where the people who have achieved the things you want to achieve go. Next thing you need to do is make sure you brush up on your job tools and your skills. So make sure your profile, your online profile is clean, clear, demonstrates your skills, your accomplishments, and the outcomes that you have for business, for, that you give to businesses. So I really want to stress this here. A lot of times people just list their job roles. No, I don't want to know that you worked in marketing and communications. I want to know, did you, apart from that, I want to know about the depth of your experience. So did you lead on certain marketing campaigns? What were the conversion rates? How did you save money? Those are the kind of things I want to see. So it's not about having five years or three years or four years. I want to see some of the results. And then obviously, depending on the, the, the length of your career, you might not have so, so many deep results, but at least you will have some. What did you contribute to? What were you part of the team that did? What did you spe specially do in specifically do in that team? Make sure that you are communicating all of that on your job profile. Now, the next thing you need to do is set up informational interviews. Informational interviews are, look, <laughs> they are so important. So what is an informational interview? An informational interview is basically, and obviously when you're setting it up, you don't tell the person, I want to set up an informational interview. So you know your who is, the people who are doing roles you would like to do. What you can do is send them a message and say, oh, hello, my name is so, so, and so. I've been working in this specific sector. Um, I've closed out on these kind of projects. And I'm now looking to um, use my skills to help X and Y type of organizations do this. I can see that this is something you have done in your career. Would you be willing to spend 20 minutes of your time having a virtual call with me to discuss um, how I can achieve similar goals or to discuss how I can do the same? or to answer a few of my questions, right? So those are informational interviews where you're connecting with people in your who list and you're asking them for advice. Now it's not like, oh, please ma, I need your help ma. Mm -mm. It is, 
this is the value I bring. This is what I'm trying to achieve. Please, can you give me advice on how to do that? It's a very specific request. And when you're setting up, when you're asking people for informational interviews, please, please, please make sure that your, your request is very simple and specific. If the person has to scroll down the page to read when you're sending them an email, the email is too long. Make sure it's something that people can read and respond to immediately. Then build visibility online. Social, use social networks to build visibility for your skills. And I'll show you how. The first is, we've already talked about this, right? Make sure your, your online profile is always complete with key skills. And the thing here is, focus on creating a profile for the job you want, not the one you have. What does that mean? So recently I was talking to somebody who, um, she used to be an accountant and now she's trying to position as somebody who can do supply chain, right? Um, so, and she's actually going to be a master's, she's registering with the association and all of that. Now, when she sent me her CV, she all she had were her accounting roles and her accounting functions. And I was like, the only role this thing will attract for you is another accounting role. And she was like, so what do I do? I said, what are the transferable skills? What are the things that you have done in your current role that will make you attractive for um, supply chain management role? And we started looking at different things. She had done a lot of stakeholder management, a lot of cost cutting. All those kind of things make you relevant for this next role. So make sure you showcase the depth of your experience, your skills, business outcomes in line with the roles you are looking for. Connect with people who are in the roles you would like to do next. Now, this is to a recruiter the other day, and she was saying that sometimes what happens is, you know, you put out a role and you get, you know, 600 CVs or whatever. Nobody's going to come through 600 CVs. So what they do is sometimes they look at the first 100. So maybe your own CV is number 107. They might not even get to it, right? They look at the first 100. And if they can find their best candidates in the first 100, so what do you need to do to stand out? You've applied for this or you've seen that a certain recruiter has looked at, from this company has looked at your profile. What do you do? You send them a message. You send them an email message and say, oh, hello, I applied for social and so role. Um, in my CV, I demonstrated X, Y, and Z. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, right? You need to do things that make you visible, that bring you to the front of the pack. Another thing that you need to do is share content about your industry. Right? How are you sharing content about your industry? Make sure in, when you get involved in like professional associations and things, they have a lot of industry magazines. You can you can volunteer to contribute articles. You can publish articles on LinkedIn. This is where you get involved and showcase your knowledge. Right. So to summarize, right, five key steps: get clear on what you want on your next role and skills. Right. Understand your current skills, what you want to achieve, and how to project your skills further. For those, for those opportunities, brush up on your job and search tools. Something I forgot to mention, which is so important, is when you see, when you start following the people who are doing the things you want to do, you start to see certain skills gaps, right? So it's very important, especially soft skills gap. Make sure that you are, you are doing a lot of online courses. And I know that Jobberman has um, a lot of online soft skills opportunities available. So, and I know Sheila is going to talk about this later. So please make sure you stay tuned and listen to what Sheila is saying so that you can make, you can ensure that you, you brush up on any gaps that might be in your CV. Build your whole list. So your whole list, like I said, a list of people who have done the things you want to do in your career. Please don't just have two people. Have like 10, 15, 20. Because the problem with networking is that when you're relying on only one person or only one job, you are desperate. But when you have many opportunities that you are chasing, you know, you can, be, you can feel a bit more relaxed. Build connections. Build connections by scheduling informational interviews and virtual chats. Show up online, right? Join virtual seminars, professional groups online, create content, join webinars. And that's it. Um, if you want to connect with me, if you have any questions, you can follow me on Instagram on at Inspired by Glory. You can send me an email at glory at inspiredbyglory.com or you can follow me on LinkedIn at Glory Edozian. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Any questions? Thank you. Please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Glory. So we do have a few questions, right? Um, so I will start. So there's one question that we I had attempted to ask answer before. So I'm going to ask you that question now. Um, someone called Grace said, "Please, I need help or suggestions on how to get a remote job outside the country while here in Nigeria." Okay. So 
Well, what, what are some of the tips you had already given the person so I don't repeat it? <laughs> well, I I mentioned looking out for remote jobs and then also obviously mentioned checking on the Juma platform as well because we have remote jobs listed on the platform. So always to check the platform for such opportunities. Okay. So yes, obviously check the Juma Man platform. Another thing that you can do is find recruiters who um who recruit for specific organizations abroad right? So find them online to see if they're already on the Jobberman platform and things like that, or they're recruiting on the Jobber platform, Jobberman platform and connect with them. Do you know anyone who has also gotten a remote job? Find out how do they get it? Remember this? So this is the idea of the who list. How do they get it? How do they position themselves? Sometimes my advice to people is copy until you become, right? So how do those people do it? Focus on, uh, on their strategies. Another thing is to join um, various remote board and remote job board um, network networking groups. So there's Reddit, there are a few ones. So just go on Google and just and, and Google, you know, remote jobs um, boards, and you see different ones coming up so that you can apply, right? So there are Slack groups. There are so many that you can you can you can join and apply for. But again, make sure that when you are on these platforms, you are also positioning yourself because a lot of people are on that platform, and you want to make sure that you you know you are visible. Okay, so another question. Um, so this person is a 28-year-old graduate of finance and banking, practicing accountant, um, and she's also an ICANN student, right? So she's trying to get a job in, well, her key interest is to be a financial analyst in finance and investment banking. However, there's an age restriction of 26. So she's 28. How exactly can she get into that industry? So again, it's by holding informational. Um, it's from by holding informational interviews. So who are the people that already have that job? Who are the people that have um, the capacity to hire for that job? Have conversations with them. Let them know. Look, this is my goal. Um, you know, but I'm. You know, the the age limit is twenty six and everything. I'm twenty eight, two years. You know, what is your advice for me? What can I do? Let them know. They might be able to tell you about other routes that you can enter. But just sitting down and saying, oh, the age limit is 20, is 20, is 26, I'm 28. Oh dear, what do I do? And then you are asking people that are not in that sector. You are not going to get the answers. You have to connect. You see, the mistake a lot of people make when they are when they are networking is that they are not connecting with the right people. You need industry insights, industry information. And the only way you can get that is by networking with the people in the industry. Do you understand? So that's a very specific question that only somebody who is in that financial role will know. And so the only way to answer that for yourself is to connect with them. Thank you so much for that. Um, then another question says, how do you build a network with people who are highly experienced in different industries? I think that's, that's actually a very, um, that's a question I'm sure lots of people have. So how exactly do you build a network with people? So, <laughs> The, I think the first thing here is to know that because they're highly experienced doesn't mean that, you know, there's anything wrong with you, right? Because I know a lot of times the, the, the cocoa of that question, the background of that question is you're saying, you know, they have a lot of experience and I don't. So how do I, how do I build the connection, right? Those people want, at some point, they were in your shoes, right? So there's no, and one day you will be in their shoes. So again, it's the mindset thing. Get your mindset, under, get your mindset right, right? Understand that I'm growing in my career. And just because somebody has more years of experience than me does not mean that I too won't have ex that level of experience one day. So that's the first thing, getting the mindset right. The second thing is to go where they go and introduce yourself to them. Right. Hello, my name is Glory. Um, I've been I've been reading your articles or I've been attending webinars that you attended. I've read your books or I, I saw when you were featured in the news or I read this industry publication where you wrote in. Um, you know, I found this this thing you wrote very interesting. Um, you know, it's great to connect. With you. you will send them an email. Tell them, you know, one of the things, so for example, the guy that I connected with who is a consultant, he has over 20 years experience more than me. He was not my mate. Right. But it was because I was able to tell him this is what I've done in my career. These are the opportunities I'm looking for. And then I stayed in touch. I was constantly telling him, oh, this is what I'm doing. So a lot of people, you have that one conversation and you disappear. You need to stay in touch with those people. Let them know what traction you are making in your career. Let them know what's happening. And then make sure that you are attending events where they attend. Because what happens is that so for that consultant, 
He was seeing me at different events. So he knew I was serious. Like, ah, uh -uh. he will go to France. He will see me at a conference. He will come to Abuja. He will see me at a conference. So he knew that, oh, this girl is serious about um, increasing her career. It takes time. I'm not going to lie. It takes time. But if you put in the work, you will be able to build that relationship. Another thing about networking that I find interesting is most times we're really focused about networking up, but hardly networking across. So when I say networking across, it's also your peers that they may not have up to 10, 20 years um, work experience, but maybe they have five years work experience, but they're in the industry that you might be interested in. So I find that most times when we say we want to network, we make that mistake of thinking, oh, I need to find someone that's way up there okay. when we can actually talk to people who are, you know, have are just in this industry that we're in. And it's always the thing about networking is sometimes, you know, someone can just know that, oh, there's a job opening here, or maybe I saw this online, I saw this on a platform, and then they can have that conversation with you about that. So I, I know personally for me, I believe that networking is almost a daily thing. It's not a, it's it's not something it's that you switch off. It's a lifestyle. You have to be very intentional about it. Very, very intentional about it. Working strategies that work are when you build yes. the bridges before you need them. Exactly. So you need to build the bridge before you need it, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Thank you so, so much. Like, I took so many notes while you were talking. Um, so I like I'm taking notes of the who list. <laughs> um, so basically, who, who is doing the job that I want? Um, and then also the job tools and skills. Um, that also as well, I took notes of that. You know, and, um, you know, you had mentioned, and I was going to talk about it as well, um, at Jobberman, we actually do have, like, tools and skills. At the moment, one of the skills that we have or trainings that we have is the Jobberman soft skills training. And it's amazing that we have a whole class on employability under the Jobberman soft skills training, and networking comes under that as well, as well as having, like, a good CV, making sure your CV is um, ATS, what's called Applicant Tracking System Compliance. Um, and these are tips and little tricks that if you worked on your CV um, very well with the right keywords, with the, the right description, the right summary, you can actually have companies notice your CV more because most um, employers use the ATS. Like employers on our platform, for instance, we have the ATS available. So if your CV is ATS compliant, then they will be able to, um, when you're CV through the CVs, your CVs definitely will be one of the ones that pop up. However, if you know you feel like okay, I'm not I'm not really sure how to do this ATS thing. You can either take the soft skills training class where you get to learn a bit more about it, or you can contact Jobberman. We also have CV services, so we can work on your CV for you as well. So whichever one you want to do, that's why you have Jobberman here. We're here to help you out, which whichever way. Now, speaking of maximizing the Jobberman platform, which is one of the reasons that we're here today, um, it's not just to go on the Jobberman platform and upload your CV. Same thing about being visible online, increasing your visibility. That's really how it is with the Jobberman platform. You can increase your visibility by actually completing your profile. Most times when people create profiles on Jobberman, they just, oh, I've started, oh, I've uploaded my CV. And then they just add one or two lines and then they leave it and they forget about it. And then they wonder why every time they apply for jobs on the platform, they're not getting the recognition that they thought they would get. They're not seeing that. They're not, they're not being boosted, right? So one of the ways to actually boost your profile on the Jobberman platform is to actually complete your profile. It's very simple. By the time you complete your profile to 100%, it sort of unlocks you to like a new level. It's like playing a game. It unlocks you to a new level where you can actually boost your profile. So which means that top employers that are currently hiring or currently have job openings on our platform will get to see your profile first. So that's really how it works for the Jobberman platform. So you create your profile, and in the process of creating your profile, you have to upload your CV. And then after you've uploaded your CV, you have to fill out also your details. You have a short summary. The summary is not an essay. It's a really short summary, but very concise straight to the point, what you do, years of experience that you have, the skills, what you have to offer. Just that summary. 
and then you have a breakdown of your work experience and just like glory mentioned earlier so it's not just listing your job description or oh, this is what i was doing there but how did you add value to the companies that you were working with this, this are the kind of things that employers are looking for and it's pretty much the same thing as well on the platform employers who come on our platform want to be able to see that truly you are someone who's going to add value to their company and your CV is sort of like the first way for them to get to know you. It's kind of like, it's like a little brand book. That's how people get to see who you are. That's how people get to know who you are. So you have to make sure that your CV is tailored to what you are looking for. Another thing that Glory said, and I'm actually going to, because I wrote that down, she said, create a profile for the job you want, not the one you have. And I'll use myself as an example. So I started off my career as an investment banker, right? So I went from being an investment banker to being a communication specialist. Yeah, from one side of numbers to another side. But when I wanted to start a career in communications, one of the things I had to do was tailor my CV and my profile for a job in communications. And how did I do that? It's basically looking at the jobs I had done and the companies that I had worked worked with, excuse me, worked with, what are the things that I was doing then that actually related to communications? I was writing reports, I was, you know, helping with um, updates, things like that. And those were the things that, and also got the necessary skills, those were the things that I was able to put together to get a job in communications. Now, when you're setting up a job man um, profile, even though you're working as an accountant, for instance, and maybe you want to um, get a job, say, as an investment banker, right? As an accountant, you need to be, you need to know what the keywords are. You know, are you doing valuations? Um, what, what is it? What is your understanding for you know, of um, debt to equity and things like that? You, sh you should be able to add that to your profile and to your job description, the things that you were able to do, and also show that you have the necessary skills. If you might not have the practical skills, but you have the technical skills that employers are looking for. And in addition to having the technical skills, you also need to have the soft skills. So again, jobman.com forward slash soft skills, right? So you also have the soft skills that is needed because in addition to having the technical skills, they need to know that you're someone who is adaptable, you're someone who's innovative, because having the skills of adaptability and being innovative, it means that in whatever industry or whatever position that you find yourself, you find it very quickly to adapt and to work and also to um, contribute to the success of the company, right? So doing that on the Jobman platform is also very essential for your growth in career and using the platform. We have a lot of companies currently on our platform and some of the job positions of current roles that a lot of these employers are hiring for are like head of finance, assistant general manager, head of HR, HR manager, um, construction and project managers. These are the kind of roles and lots of them actually pay quite well. They pay, I'm not going to start putting the amounts of how much these companies are paid. You have to go on the platform to check. Yes, create your profile, complete it to 100%, boost your profile, and then you get to see all the details, you know? Um, but a lot of these companies are actually paying very, very well, kind of companies that we would all like to work for. So it is important that you complete your profile. It is important that you boost your profile on Jobberman in, in addition to increasing your visibility. And I feel like I've lost glory again to network. But yes, so and that's basically that's basically it on on it i don't know if i missed anything um my colleagues have been in the comment section they've been dropping links um there was a question that was asked if we have a whatsapp group no we do not have a whatsapp group however we do have a telegram group um where we post jobs right jobs that are on the platform so um we're going to drop the link in the chat section of the Telegram group where you get to know details of the different jobs that are on the platform for you to apply um, apply for. Now, someone just asks, how do we overcome missing people from our career of interest who are not willing to help? Even after you even call them and there was no answer, what else can I do? Um, to be honest, a no from someone could be a yes from another person. So just because someone says no doesn't mean that it's going to stop you from trying tasking someone else, right? Um, 
you should always be open. Like, it's just the way of life. You should always be open to speaking to other people, right? Another thing you can do is you can actually research. Research your industry of in interest, your career of interest. Research, get to know what is out there. What are the necessary skills needed for the career of interest? By doing this, in a way, you're actually meeting people without having to, you know, send messages as well. So in addition to interviewing people, please um, research as well. There's, you know, Google is a fantastic place. We can get all sorts of information required. Um, so I was just asking about our CV services. Uh, well, let's say, how do I send my CV for review? Like I said before, we have CV services, right? We have, when you go to, um, when you go to jobman.com, forward slash CV services, you can request for uh, a member of the team to be to contact you, and then we'll be able to review your CV to make sure that your CV is ATS compliant. That's the applicant tracking system. And that is the way forward, honestly. If you're not getting the kind of jobs that you're looking for right now, maybe your CV is not ATS compliant. Just maybe. And that might really be, that might really be the challenge that you are having. Um, so Glory has, is Glory back up now? Gloria, are you back up? Yes, I am. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, yeah, so there was a question that was asked that I was trying to answer. And it's always funny, it's like when you just, when network dis decides to like misbehave, that's when, <laughs> that's when we get the question. But there was a question that was asked, so how do we overcome meeting people from our career of, or from our career of interest who are not willing to help, right? Um, so it's even after you text them, mail them, or call them, there's, there's no response. So I said that, you know, you ask other people, and then you also research. Researching is another way of getting to know the details of the career of interest that you're looking for. I don't know if you have any other additional tips to add to that. Well, a few things. So one thing, you must, you, you must also understand that people are on their own journey. So just like you are looking for opportunities, that person too is looking for opportunities, and people are distracted. They may, you know, they might have their own personal issues. So... Don't let that weigh you down. That's the first thing. And don't now start saying, oh, I Kuku said it. This one that they said people want to help in your network is not true and everything. I had a lot of people who have helped me in my network. The second mm -hmm. thing is, how are you asking for help? A lot of times people ask for help in the wrong way. So I get a lot of messages from people that say, like the other day I got a message from somebody who was saying, oh, please, I need a job in the computer sciences. I can't help you. Like you clearly you've not done your research. I have no network in computer sciences. I have no technical background. All of that so you're asking so are you even asking the right person for help because for those kind of messages i can't even answer what would i answer you another day somebody sent me a message please i need advice on marketing branding and something else i was like okay how do i answer this question like do i sit down and tell you the definition of marketing and branding like so sometimes your questions are not the right questions so beyond even asking when going to ask more people are you being specific right so when you're asking people for help let them know what kind of help you want, but phrase it in a way that you showcase your value. So for example, if you're looking for a job opportunity and you are in tech and you send a message to somebody in tech, you can send them a message to say, oh, I've been working in tech for the last three years. I've led on, I've worked on social and social projects. I'm looking, um, I see that you have done X, Y, and Z, which are things I'm trying to accomplish in my own career. Would you mind spending 20 minutes just answering a few of my questions? And you can even send the questions ahead of time. Now, send that to more than one person. That's how you effectively engage people, right? Now, I've done something like that recently. There are some things I'm trying to do in my business. I connected with a lady who, is, who lives abroad, and I asked her, like, oh, would you spend, mind spending 20 minutes of your time, you know, discussing this with me? And she replied, and she said, oh, I've looked at your profile. I think you need to do X, Y, and Z first. And I replied, and I said, so what she was telling me is, like, before we even talk, there are some things you've not even started doing. So I replied mm -hmm. and I said, oh, thank you very much for the advice. Um, I will, I'll get back to you in January after I would have completed doing these things, right? So this is how you engage people. So in January, I've already set a reminder on my phone to make sure that I send her another message to say, this is what I've done. Um, let me know if you're open to, to meeting. So it's always about how you engage people and how you keep them engaged, right? But also have more than one person that you're trying to connect with. I hope that's helpful. I, I'm sure that's been very helpful. Another thing that, another mistake that we make sometimes is that um, we have companies that are in the area of interest, right? 
However, the people we're speaking to are not in that exact um, industry. Do you understand? I'm trying to, so for instance now, um, maybe you know someone that works in a tech company, right? So you say, oh, I'm trying to, and so you go to ask the marketing person how to start a career in tech. But they are not exactly <laughs> they are the marketing person <laughs> in a tech company they don't exactly have a career in tech so you should be looking for someone who is working as maybe a, pro a product manager or someone who's like you know someone who is in that field that you're looking for you have to be very specific about that field that you're looking for when it comes to networking um thank you so much glory sorry Yes. I was going to say, and if you let's say the marketing person is your friend, you can say, "Can you connect me with your colleague exactly. that is in?" Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't have any more questions, and okay. I mean, wow, it's already almost an hour. So, <laughs> thank you so so much, Glory. We had so much fun. I know I had so much fun listening to you and sharing your tips. Um, it's it's been it's been such an honor. For us to have you here um for everyone <laughs> for everyone joining um, we're also going to be sharing a post events link as well like a survey link um where you just get to tell us what you thought about the session what else would you like to learn um so we can have more of these sessions where we're learning more um about you know careers and recruitment now talking talent is a seminar that's a webinar actually um well thanks to COVID and thanks to virtual <laughs> virtual work now. It's a webinar that we have regularly and we actually have it for both employers and also for job seekers. So we're very, very grateful for everyone who has joined today. Um, don't forget jobberman.com, create your profile, complete your profile to 100% and boost your profile. To be honest, I feel like after this event, everybody that's here watching, you need to go to jobberman.com create your profile and boost that profile, right? And then in addition to that, don't forget to get certified in our soft skills training, jobman.com for slash soft skills. We're also on Coursera as well. So you can go register on Coursera, um, well, jobman.com for slash soft skills, and then you'll be taken to Coursera and you can get um, certified in the soft skills training. And then finally, our CV services, See, because I understand that some of us, you know, December is coming. We're going to be so, we're going to be so caught up in our, you know, Christmas, it's in Christmas rice and chicken, and maybe you've forgotten about your CV. Don't worry, that's why we are here for you. So send us your CV, contact us, send us your CV. We will work on your CV for you to make sure that you're starting 2021 on a good note with a CV that is ready to take over the world, right? So that's that. So my colleague Buki is going to be sharing the link to the survey as well. So please feel free. I think I'll also drop it as well in the, in the comment section. So please, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for um, being a part of this session today. And um, Glory, thank you so much. You can connect with Glory on LinkedIn, Instagram, where else? Twitter? Are you on Twitter? LinkedIn and Instagram. LinkedIn and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn no, and Instagram. No. And obviously for Jobberman Nigeria, we're everywhere. So Jobberman Nigeria on LinkedIn, Jobberman um, Nigeria, on, so we have Jubman Nigeria on Instagram. We also have Jubman Youth.ng on Instagram. And we're also on Twitter and on Facebook. So search, connect with us. And um, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me, guys. Have a lovely weekend. And well done to Jubman for all that you guys are doing to make sure that people get the opportunities that they deserve. Well done.